Okay, hello everyone. Today is Friday, August 23rd, 2024. The Lord told me to speak in tongues and he gave me a rhema message um, that is prophetic. So as usual, in the description box below, I will type out the transcript for you and the accompanying scripture and anything else the Lord may tell me to put in there for your reference. I am permitted to make commentary, so I am going to open in prayer, and then I will read this to you and speak as the Lord leads me to. Father God, Yahweh, once again, Lord, I just plead the blood of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth over my entire domain in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth. I ask you, Father God, Yahweh, in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth, will you please put a hot coal over my tongue and prevent me from saying anything not true, not coming from you, or how you don't want me to, and give me a check in my spirit if I'm about to cross any boundaries, Lord. <sighs> Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth, I ask, will you please breathe into me afresh, overflowing your Holy Spirit and your peace that surpasses all comprehension, emotions, moods, and circumstances. Holy Spirit, I ask in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth, will you please baptize me afresh, with your fire and fill my mouth with your words, vocabulary, acumen, scripture, truth. I ask for your presence, Father God, Yahweh, Holy Spirit, Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth, to just be here and flow through me, out of me, overflowing for the edification of all those listening. I ask for you to convict hearts, Lord, in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth. Please fill me with your words, Lord. I am here and I ask that it be only your words instead of my own as I speak in this recording. I ask for all these things in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth. Amen. This is what Father God Yahweh said. How many times must I exhort you to get your deliverance? How many times must I warn you? You sit waiting. I sit waiting. Who is God? Do you really believe you know better than I? Stubborn hearts will be swarmed. Regret will overtake you like a deluge when you are covered with boils. The deliverance must start now. The process takes time. Marriage takes time, even the quickest all the warnings, teachings, prophecies, yet you still refuse. Your flesh will writhe in pain. The few who get their deliverance now will be safe when the world is dying. Immunity comes by deliverance. Signed, Yahweh. The scripture he told me to read to accompany this message comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 6, verse 8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. Lord, I know there's certain things you want me to go over. You've already kind of given me some mental outline of what you want me to say, but please guide me. I really don't know what I could say that I haven't said already. I'm going to be doing the official comprehensive deliverance teaching at the end of October, I believe. I'm still at the tail end of my own deliverance process. I do have the ox anointing. I am a pioneer. I'm still clarifying things with God. He's the only one leading me and teaching me. If you're not aware, let me make you aware. I I've been sharing a lot of stuff on the community page to keep you abreast of things. If you're not aware, let me make you aware that the Lord told me back in January that we hit the apotheosis of the fourth seal, okay? Again, apotheosis is a fancy word, but what it means is that you hit a climax of sorts, but once you hit that point, it continues steady from that point on, okay? We hit the apotheosis of the fourth seal back in January when the Lord led me to see reports of people being found dead 
in their cars because they froze to death in their cars. The fourth seal is death. We know that it will come by sword, meaning war, weaponry, and so forth. We know that it will come via hunger, starvation, famine. And the Lord has told me that we are already in the last seven years of famine. Okay, the, the years, the, the seven years of plenty, the seven years of famine. We are in the seven years of famine. And what the Lord was clarifying with me before I hit record earlier is that it's not necessarily a famine in the sense of lack of availability, although it will come to that. It's a lack of affordability. Okay, because whether something is available or not, if you have no means to procure it, it's a moot point, whether it's available or not, if you can't procure it anyway, right? With sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. Let's skip over death for a second and go to the beasts of the earth. Again, if you're not aware, the Lord has been showing me increasingly all these reports, videos popping up in my thread of all of these you know, freak quote-unquote accidents or incidents of animals attacking people by land, by sea. Recently, the, I saw uh, a few different videos popping up talking about dogs, supposedly man's best friend, killing, mauling people, particularly women, We have seen stuff happening out in the waters, stuff happening to boats and stuff. Okay, pay attention, pay attention. Now, back in 2021, the Lord told me first, I didn't see anyone else say this anywhere in the Christian community online. Now, granted, I'm not on every platform, but he told me that where it says with death, it means the black death, the plague. Now, back a couple years ago, the, supposedly there was a squirrel in Colorado that supposedly had the bubonic plague. I haven't really seen or heard anything about that specifically. But right now, let me make you aware, if you are not aware, like literally every day, the narratives are increasing that there is this infirmity and that infirmity and this infirmity and that infirmity. They're getting to the point now where I, I think it, like, I'm kind of joking, but kind of not. Like, they're just making names up. I saw something pop up in my thread a couple days ago that that's exactly what I did. I chuckled and I was like, I think they just made that name up out of thin air. Like, I, I don't remember what it was. I can't pronounce it. It was some, like, wacky word I have never heard of in my life. Okay, they're just coming out with all kinds of different names, diagnoses of sicknesses, left and right. If you're not aware, if you don't pay attention to my community page, again, I don't share everything on the community page, but I've been trying to share a lot more lately of just keeping people abreast of like current affairs, okay? Um, up in the state of Massachusetts, they're already doing a quote-unquote voluntary lock, you know, down. Okay, there's, uh, there, there's just all kinds of stuff going on, okay? Let me read this to you again. Yahweh says, How many times must I exhort you to get your deliverance? How many times must I warn you? You sit waiting. I sit waiting. Who is God? Do you really believe you know better than I? Stubborn hearts will be swarmed. Regret will overtake you like a deluge when you are covered with boils. When you are covered with boils. Now, right now, we know, you, if, unless you're living under a rock, you should be aware that they are talking about a certain infirmity that used to have the word monkey in the name of it. Now they've shortened it. They've abbreviated it, okay? And that has a form of, you could say, boils to it. But there's also what's going to be coming down the pipeline here. I believe God said that the, the Black Death is going to be returning. Regret will overtake you like a deluge when you are covered with boils. The deliverance must start now. How many times? Has the Lord had me come on here and invite you 
to email me so that I can start facilitating your deliverance process and explaining to you that it takes time, but yet barely anybody has emailed me to get their deliverance. And the few that do, they take their sweet time completing what I tell them to complete. Like literally months just to go from one step to another. No one seems to have any sense of urgency about how important deliverance is in general, but especially right now, the time that we're in. The deliverance must start now. The process takes time. Marriage takes time, even the quickest. The Lord is touching on how he's been telling people and prompting people and convicting people and confirming to people that you're supposed to be getting married. There are ministries that are supposed to be birthed, that are supposed to be empowered, that are supposed to be promoted and taken to the next level with your spouse and people are not coming together with their spouses. All the warnings, teachings, prophecies, yet you still, capital S-T-I-L-L, -L, still refuse. Your flesh will writhe in pain, says Yahweh. The few who get their deliverance now will be safe when the world is dying. Immunity comes by deliverance. Let me remind you of the verse that says, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but it is against the principalities, powers, rulers, and hosts. Those are the four ranks of evil spirits. I'm honestly tired of repeating myself on this channel, and I've told God that, and I can really empathize with Moses and Aaron at this point. Maybe only a little bit, I'm sure, because they had to deal with people face to face, and it was a whole nation, but I feel like I'm just banging my head against the wall. I might as well talk to a rock. No one on this channel seems to be taking me as God's mouthpiece seriously. You're not taking God seriously. The Lord says you're going to be. He says regret will overtake you like a deluge when you are covered with boils. We have been born into believing that we have to do things in the natural. But as Christians, we're supposed to be spiritual people. We're not supposed to be carnally minded. We're supposed to be spiritually minded. It tells us that in scripture. Renew your mind. Put on the mind of Christ. You're supposed to know as a Christian that everything has its roots in the spirit. Everything originates in the spirit. We are body, soul, and spirit. Everything comes down through our spirit, into our soul, into our body. If you want to be resistant and even better immune to all the infirmities that are coming and not just the infirmities, but I mean, that alone should be enough to light a fire under you. It should be enough to motivate you, but also your finances, everything. If you want to be immune, if you want to be at least resistant, if you want to be immune, then get your deliverance now. Email me. Email me so we can start the process for you. And if you're waiting for me to come on here and give you testimonies, what you don't realize is that God is testing you right now. He wants you to walk by faith. Okay? Yes, I have some testimonies and I'm going to have even more testimonies. But God has told me not to share them yet. It's not time yet. He wants to see who's going to come forward and walk by faith. You're supposed to have your own intimate relationship with him. You're supposed to take everything back to him and ask him about it. And the impression I'm getting is no one's doing that. So, I believe the Lord wants me to go over the surface level of what he's revealed to me. Again, our D, you know, N, you know, A is a receptor. It is a receiver, spiritually speaking, okay? Just like when you have like a radio antenna, okay, and it receives a signal, your phone receives a signal, our D, you know, N, you know, A, receives stuff in the spirit. And I think he particularly wants me to emphasize the topic of witchcraft, okay? You have 
such high ranking, so to speak, uh, witches and warlocks, especially warlocks, okay? The Freemasons and all those type of people, okay? They are putting out witchcraft against the whole world, pretty much, especially the Christians. And especially those that are in public ministry. What's coming, a lot of it has to do with witchcraft. And there is a way to become immune to witchcraft. There is. But first you have to get delivered of the witchcraft spirits that were sent against you before those openings can be closed. So let me... Let me go over this, okay? So, there are seven types of openings. There's 713 types of spirits. And for each one of those, most of those has like a... Lord, how do you want me to put this? There's what's called spirits of demons. And if you've never heard that term before, it is in the book of Revelation. I think it's chapter 16 off the top of my head, okay? And then there's the types of spirits that are called binders, okay? Those are the disembodied spirits of the giants that were killed in Noah's flood, okay? There's 713 types, okay? So you can pretty much double that. Not all of them have binders, but most of them do, okay? The binders are the ones that are really particularly focused on influencing you to sin. Whereas the spirits of demons can do that, but they can also influence other people to sin against you, okay? I'm going to be teaching on all of this like more officially later on this year. In your DNA, for every single one of those types, for all 713 types, you've got seven types of openings, okay? There is your domain windows your domain doors, your atmosphere windows, your atmosphere apertures, your atmosphere, if you are appointed over other people, there's also atmosphere casements, okay? If Then there's the atmosphere apertures, the atmosphere portals, and then there is the atmosphere doors. There's two different doors. There's the doors of wavering and the doors of, of destruction, okay? Now, I went over this recently in one or two videos, but the Lord is telling me he wants me to go over it again. So, the domain windows, that is level one. That is the first level, okay? When people assert their authority in Christ and they utilize, they apply the blood of Christ, they utilize the name of Christ, and they command spirits, that only applies to level one, the first level. When people lay hands and, and they hope that Holy Spirit will transfer through the laying out of hands, through the physical touch, okay? Which I have to always remind people that it says in Scripture, do not be hasty to do that because... Just like Holy Spirit can transfer through that physical touch, evil spirits can also transfer through that physical touch. You, no one really should be laying hands on anyone else unless they themselves have gotten their full deliverance and all their openings are closed. That's what God has told me, okay? But all that stuff that everybody loves to do, and they're really just going around most of the time making things worse, it applies to level one. All the fasting that people are doing, most of it pretty much applies to level one. The domain windows. The domain windows are spirits that just come in and they harass you. That's it. They're just there. You didn't invite them. You didn't come into agreement or covenant with them. None of that. Okay? They are the easiest ones to get rid of. That is the, the lowest level, so to speak. Okay? You got to get delivered of those spirits first so that Yahweh can close those domain windows so that those can't come in anymore. Okay, and everything has to be done in a proper order. It says that in Corinthians. Okay, this is all in my teaching. I had this all typed up. Eventually, I'm going to be doing a complete official teaching teaching on here. I'm going to have a document that you can even download. Okay, the second level of deliverance is your domain doors. Okay, this, excuse me, let me go back to level one. Level one is what you're captive to. So again, when Yeshua launched his ministry, he quoted, Isaiah 61, 1, that he came to set the captives and the prisoners free. The entire mission statement of why Christ came was deliverance. Thank you, Lord, for the words. Deliverance. That's why he came, to deliver you, to liberate you. If you want nothing to do with deliverance, you want nothing to do with Christ. Stop calling yourself a Christian. So level one, the domain windows, that's what you're captive to, okay? Level two, the domain doors. 
That's what you're prisoner to. Okay? That's the stuff that you invited. Okay? So, I don't know if you have heard about, like, what they say about, like, vampires and stuff, right? They say, like, oh, a vampire can't enter the house unless you invite them in, right? Like, there's some truth to some of this stuff, okay? So a window, a burglar comes in through a window, right? So the domain windows, those spirits just come in. You didn't invite them. You didn't give them permission. They just come in like a thief in the night. That's what you're captive to. First, you got to deal with that. All 713, because you probably have most of them. Okay, on, on each level, you probably have most of them. Okay, then once that's dealt with, once your domain windows are closed, all 713, then you got to go to level two. That's the domain doors. Your domain doors are what you are prisoner to. Okay, this is the stuff that you invited in. You basically stood spiritually at the door of your house, your spiritual house, so to speak. You opened the door and you said, hey, come on, come on. By stuff that you did, decisions you made, stuff you chose to let in your eye gates and your ear gates and yada, yada, yada. Okay. Things that you said even. Okay. Whatever. Okay. You came into covenant with these spirits. You are prisoner to these spirits. That has to be dealt with. Once you deal with that, and this level, this level is also where all the generational stuff is, the generational curses, yada, 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 okay? I saw someone, uh, I'm not going to name her name, but I saw a video pop up in my thread today. It was a short video, but the title was something to the effect of how supposedly fasting can uh, break generational curses. Let me just tell you. No, not unless you fast for 40 days and nights, 40 days straight of nothing but water. That's what is required for level two, for the domain doors, for what you're prisoner to. If you want to break generational curses via fasting, that's what you got to do. You got to fast for 40 days. Now, there's better, more efficient ways of getting your deliverance, okay? And that's what I'm here to show you. That's what I'm here to share with you if you email me. And then those who refuse to email me still, in a few months, I'm going to be sharing it on the channel. And on level one, the fasting that you can do there is 72 hours of nothing but water. And a lot of people can't even do that, never mind 40 days, okay? And, there, and you have to ask Yahweh and Yeshua's name to close your domain windows when you do that, okay? So that's level one and level two. That's your domain. That's the stuff that God, like, if you're not going to do all seven levels, he wants you to at least do those two first two levels, okay? Then there's your atmosphere. Level three, you got your atmosphere windows. This is where the witchcraft spirits come in. The witches and the warlocks, the Freemasons, the Eastern Stars, the Wicca and whatever, okay? Witchcraft, okay? The spirits get sent to you. That's all witchcraft is, is basically someone is sending spirits at you, to you, okay? And yeah, you may have personal enemies that may be sitting there in their bedroom doing whatever witchcraft in their bedroom against you, you personally. But then there's also witches and warlocks that are doing stuff against the whole world, against all Christians, against all ministers, whatever, okay? You have to get delivered of that. And once you're delivered of those spirits... Those openings have to be closed. Your atmosphere windows have to be closed. Then you can move on to the next level. The fourth level is the atmosphere apertures. Actually, hold on a second. So on the third level, if God has ordained you, if he has, if he has appointed you to be over anyone else, to oversee anyone else in any way, shape, or form, there's also what's called the atmosphere casements, okay? The atmosphere casements is where the devil himself will send spirits against you, okay? Those are addressed at the same time with the witchcraft. Then you move on to the atmosphere apertures. This is level four, atmosphere apertures. These are spirits that got in by fallen angel people, people that, if fallen angel people that you have interacted with, that you've entered into relationship with, okay? This is kind of a complex notion, um, and I don't know if I have the full revelation on it yet, but this is what the Lord's been telling me. And I do have scripture that goes along with it and whatever, but 
I'm not doing the full teaching right now, okay? You got to get delivered of those spirits. And those openings have to be closed. Then you go on to level five. Level five is the atmosphere portals. The atmosphere portals are spirits that were sent at you by fallen virtues. Okay, so there's fallen angels. And one of the types of fallen angels, I believe God told me, are called virtues. These are better known as, also known as, the greys. Okay, aliens. Okay, there's no such thing as aliens. In that sense, okay, they're fallen angels. They send spirits against us, okay? You have to get delivered of those and have those openings closed, okay? Then there's two different types of doors in your atmosphere. The first is the doors of wavering. The doors of wavering are spirits that you... I believe what I have on the teaching is the... How God told me to put it was, you volunteered to be a victim of these spirits, through doubting. By doubting God, you volunteered to be a victim of particular types of spirits. Okay? The doors of wavering. Okay? You have to get delivered of those, and those doors have to be closed. And then the last level, the seventh level, is called the doors of destruction. And this, these are spirits that you appended yourself to. That's how God told me to phrase it in, in the teaching. You appended yourself to these spirits through your rebellion. Through your rebellion. And this is where Deuteronomy 28 kicks in. All the cursings for disobeying God, for disobedience, for rebelling, for refusing. That's where it all kicks in. Now, for each of these, there's an increasing amount of time that you have to wait to be completely delivered. And there's a certain amount of time until like the next level spirits kind of like activate. <clears throat> and he has taught me that the seventh level, there's actually um, a way to accelerate, expedite, and even prioritize, have, have Yahweh prioritize, because um, he knows best which spirits will, will leave in, in what order on the seventh level. Um and so I'm, a, I'm, I personally, I have been delivered of all the spirits from level one through level five, and I'm almost done with level seven. And so I just have to deal with level six for a little bit longer. Okay. That's where I believe I'm at in my process. But the Lord is telling you through me, you, you here listening to this channel, watching this channel, subscribe to this channel, monitoring this channel, spying on this channel, all y'all, this is for you. The God, God is telling you, you need to get your deliverance. You need to email me. And if you burnt your bridge with me, now's the time to repent and apologize, okay? Because if you're going to be, regardless of your deliverance, if you don't apologize to the people that you have reviled, especially God's anointed, you're not going to heaven anyway, okay? Let me read this to you again. Yahweh says, how many times must I exhort you to get your deliverance? How many times must I warn you? You sit waiting. I sit waiting. Who is God? Do you really believe you know better than I? Stubborn hearts will be swarmed. Regret will overtake you like a deluge when you are covered with boils. The deliverance must start now. The process takes time. Marriage takes time. Even the quickest. All the warnings, teachings, prophecies. Yet you still refuse. Your flesh will writhe in pain. The few who get their deliverance now will be safe when the world is dying. Immunity comes by deliverance. We are in the fourth seal. We are in the sorrows. We are in the last seven years. And let me just say, let me clarify again, okay? If you took the swab up your and or the jab in your, then I will not facilitate your deliverance. And here's why, and I'm, I'm going to repeat myself because I've said this before. It tells us in scripture that spirits, if, if there's no infilling of the Holy Spirit to replace evil spirits when they leave, then each spirit will come back with seven more spirits. And that person, their spiritual state 
will be worse, will be more evil, more wicked than before. Okay. So even if you want to lie to me, I mean, first of all, let me just say that I pray. I, I pray and I ask God about each person anyway. Okay. But even if you come at me and you lie to me and maybe I'm deceived in that moment and I go ahead and give you the instructions. If you took the you know what here or the you know what here, which is the mark of the you know what. And you get delivered. Those spirits will come back with seven more and you'll be worse than you started off. I'm just going to I'm just being real with you. Just being honest. Okay. Let me read this again. Revelation chapter 6, verse 8. Let's just start in verse 7. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. Verse 8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And if you go to the original language, it's more akin to green. Okay, it's not white. And the name of him, pale as in sickly. Okay, as in death. And the name of him who sat on it was death. And Hades followed with him. Why do you think that is? Hades is the place of people who are dead. Okay? People. Mm, let me just leave it at that. And Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. I think I said this in a recent video, but there was someone the Lord gave me specific instructions to give to someone recently. And what they said, what, he, what God had me tell this person was, take note that animals are going to start approaching you more. They're going to be more friendly, but only engage the ones that God tells you to. Pray about each animal as they approach you because most of them are possessed. And what the Lord is popping in my head right now, actually, is uh, I've seen some people kind of mentioning this on YouTube here and there, but uh, there's this one place that I go to eat locally around here, and uh, there's this one employee that works there, and it kind of creeps me out a little bit every time I go, uh, but this person's eyes are just so black. And uh, what the Lord said to me is that person has spirits of possession. They are possessed, Okay. Take note of these things because you're going to see it more and more and you need to stay away. Okay. Um, in fact, the Lord is actually telling me to stop going to that particular place and go to a different place nearby instead. Um, I was meaning to ask him that, but he's telling me right now, actually. <laughs> yes, Lord. Okay. Um, I don't know what else I can do. I, I I do what God tells me to do. I preach and prophesy as he leads me. These messages aren't for somebody else, guys. They're for you, okay? Email me. My email will be in the description box below. It's always on my about page. Get your deliverance process started now, okay? Don't you want to be immune to witchcraft? Don't you want to be resistant and even better immune to all the sicknesses that are coming? Don't you want an improvement, a breakthrough in your finances, your relationships, your circumstances? And some people out there, I'm not going to name names, but some people out there have like serious physical body conditions. Don't you want your breakthrough? People love to talk about healing, but here's what the Lord has taught me, okay? The healing comes, the blessings come, God's will comes after the deliverance. What people don't comprehend is that evil spirits hinder and prevent God's will, the blessings, the healing, the restoration. You got to have the deliverance first. The healing can be prevented for lack of deliverance. People want the quick fix. People want quick fix, quick fix, quick fix. And God knows this. And that's why I think he has allowed his own design. In reality, things don't work like that. Okay? If you want to get your full deliverance, all seven levels, it ain't going to be quick. It's going to take months before you see the complete breakthrough. Okay? I believe it takes at least a good six months, is what God has told me, to get your full, complete deliverance. 
yeah, you might have a like, you know, some level of breakthrough as you go along and address each of the seven openings, seven levels, okay? But you're not going to have like the full complete breakthrough until a certain amount of time has gone because it takes time for the spirits to leave. Because if, if all the spirits left at once, it wouldn't be good. Because he, here's how it works. Depending on which level we're talking about, it's more so the higher up levels. It's more so the atmosphere levels, okay? Before the spirits leave, they act up, they manifest, they cause a little bit of trouble. They do. And be honest with you, okay? Everything has a cost. Hence, Yeshua told us, count the cost, okay? What I'm hearing the Lord say right now is, you know, in order for him to save the world, he had to go through physical pain, torment, torture, agony, okay? Everything has a cost. The point is, do you want the payoff, the breakthrough, the blessing, God's will, the immunity, do you want it bad enough? Does it motivate you enough to pay the cost, to count the cost and pay the cost? Are you willing to suffer temporarily for a little while so that this too shall pass and then you'll get to a point where you don't got to suffer anymore all, all that much, okay? Most of people's problems come from their own spirits. You get your deliverance, most of your problems will stop. That's what I believe the Lord has told me, and that's what I believe he's showing me. Now, yes, we're still in a fallen world, and other people still have their evil spirits that can, you know, influence them to sin against you and cause problems for you. You can't stop that. You can't control anybody else, but you can control yourself. You can decide whether or not you're going to participate in your own deliverance process. Email me. Let's get the process going now because it's going to take some time and we're running out of time. They're already showing, they're already circulating these photographs of people who have these nasty boil things all over. Why are you not motivated? Get motivated, people. Ask Yeshua. Ask Yeshua about getting your deliverance. And no, I'm not charging one penny. I'm not charging one penny. True ministry is not to be charged for. God has already set up his financial scheme in Scripture, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, okay? Okay tithing and so forth okay that's between you and him whether you donate to somebody or not whether you donate to me or not i'm not gonna i do what god tells me he tells me to facilitate someone's deliverance that's it i don't ask you for any money in return okay get your deliverance now lord is there anything else you want me to say yes okay he wants me to reference that scripture that I believe David wrote in Psalms that says that I, I will experience the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. But what people don't realize is that you have to walk by faith and get your deliverance. You have to consecrate yourself. Deliverance is a part of your consecration. You, do, you don't go to heaven unless you consecrate yourself. And part of consecration is deliverance. And if you have questions, if you're not completely sold on this idea and you have questions, email me the questions. Okay? Lord, is there anything else you want me to say? I believe that's it. I bless you all in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth.